Hello everyone, welcome back to part four. In this section, we're gonna talk about lighting and rendering. So the first thing I'm gonna do is import an IBL image. This we're gonna use in the EnviroLight of Arnold here. It's gonna add kind of like an overall kind of um, atmosphere light to the scene. It's just kind of a, a light that I painted that kind of has some stars and just kind of bright variation spots into it. It doesn't look great here because it's in the wrong gamma space when you see it here, but, but it does a good job of adding kind of an overall kind of atmospheric skylight to, to the scene. So next what I want to do is start to add some individual lights to the actual lights that we have in the scene. So the first one that I'm going to do is add a light to this street light over here. I just want to put a small little disc light in here and then have it kind of illuminate down the wall and onto the ground. A lot of the lighting that I like to do is very localized lighting and based on actual sources that's that are in the scene. So actual light sources that are in the scene. So I'm typically not using like a sunlight or anything like that that adds like a, a strong key light to the scene. I'm using very localized light based on some of the practical lights in the scene here. Let's go ahead and start to get a render going. Of course, I'm gonna use the Arnold renderer here and I'm gonna set my resolution down to 720 by 1280, just so I can kind of iterate really quickly. I'm also going to turn on GPU rendering. Since we are using the RTX 4090, uh, we can use GPU to take advantage of that speed and then we can iterate really quickly. So we can tweak colors of the lights, we can tweak the brightness and things like that. And um, because the card is so fast, it helps iterate really quickly so you can kind of see what you're doing with the render window open more interactively. So it's great here. You can see how fast we get some pixels going and then the scene starts to resolve actually really quickly, much faster than if you're using the CPU or any other kind of graphics card for that matter. All right, so the first render is looking okay. Obviously a lot of work that we need to do. There's not a lot of focus here in the scene yet and everything is still a little bit dark. I do like some of the localized light that we're getting with the street light that we added and then there's the other fluorescents that are on the left side over here. So then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is add more lights based on where I have some of the practical lights like the fluorescents, some of the other neon signs the windows coming on over there just to kind of brighten up the scene and add kind of pools of light. So what I want to try to do is focus the viewer's eye over here by the record store signs and the street light here. So that's going to be kind of my center point of interest. I want to use all the different elements of lighting, the composition and everything to draw the eye to focus on that area around the record store door and that record store sign there. All right, now I'm gonna add some of our neon materials to the record store sign here. And then I'm gonna add a couple extra disc lights here as well. The, the materials by themselves is not gonna necessarily be enough to illuminate it. And I wanna kind of exaggerate this area more. So what I'm gonna do is create this disc light here and I'm gonna have one facing towards the sign and then I'm gonna make another one that faces away. So that's gonna light up the sign behind it. And then we're gonna also put another light that shines out from there. So we're kind of recreating and exaggerating the light that the neon sign is gonna give off. Next, let's add some more of the neon materials to the tubes over here. This is gonna still kind of be like this 80s kind of style, like the these rings kind of represent the grooves in like a record album. And we're going to color these using kind of very retro 80s colors so that it kind of creates this nostalgic rainbow here. In many of my pieces, I also like to light up the fan blades. So what I'll tend to do is either add a light right on the outside or right behind it so that you get that contrast so you can see the fan blades spinning more. 
Um, otherwise, they just end up being really dark, especially when the scene is at night and you can't see a lot of light kind of bouncing around in there. So I'll add a little bit of an accent light and then it's kind of it helps to kind of draw the eye to the fans moving as well. Let's go ahead and start a render then so we can see kind of what the light is doing on these fans. It's a little bit strong here right now. Um, we're getting a lot of reflection, so I'm going to try to tone this down a little bit here. I'm going to play with some of the saturation and some of the values. Bring the intensity of those lights down a little bit. That's maybe too much. There we go. All right, well, that's a good place there. Let's take a look at the rest of the scene and start building up the rest of the lights to create more focus and, and create more pools of light. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on some atmospherics. That's gonna give all the lights a little bit more of a glow in the scene here, and it kind of adds a little bit more atmosphere to the scene, especially since later on we're gonna add some rain and if the scene feels like there's no real atmosphere in there, it doesn't really help sell the rain look. So adding a little bit of atmosphere can help kind of sell that look. And it also adds a little bit of a nice glow to everything. I don't want it to be too strong because otherwise it just tends to wash everything out or it looks just really foggy or hazy. Um, but I like enough that you can kind of see the lights illuminating the air but not so much that it washes everything out. Okay, so down here in the foreground, I'm gonna add another light. It's very kind of dark down here and we're not getting a lot of color or anything down on the ground. And so I'm gonna add like a light that kind of looks like it's coming from that street light above, even though it's not maybe at the correct angle. I'm gonna cheat another light to kind of give some highlights on the ground here. I want to get a little bit more color down there and a little bit more gradations. I'll probably move it back so it's not too strong like this. But sometimes it's nice to kind of cheat in a little bit of light just for kind of artistic purposes. The light is still motivated by the street light kind of up above there. So there's a purpose for the light. And then when you look at the piece, it's going to feel like it's coming from there, even though we had to kind of cheat it to emphasize that a little bit more. Let's just take a little bit of a closer look here at this render before we send off a higher res render. Let's just check everything's looking OK here at all the neon and the glows, just to be sure we have good values, make sure nothing's clipping out too bright. I wanna retain as much saturation as I can, but still make the neon look like it's glowing hot. Okay, everything's starting to look pretty good there. So let's move on to start to get things set up to render out the full animation and frames. Okay, so now to get some things rendered, I'm going to break some of these pieces that are animated into different sections. So I'm going to make a scene here to render only the wires. Um, that way it's gonna render faster instead of trying to render the whole scene, um, since I need to render quite a few frames here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is gonna render the wires, but I'm gonna add masks to all these other pieces here so that it's gonna mask out uh, the wire so that when I do the composite, I won't need to create a mask for all these pieces. I'm going to create a new material here that is just a mask material. I'm going to use AI standard, but I'm going to turn on the mat. And then I'm just going to, we won't really see this, but I just bring down the albedo color and then uh, bring up the roughness. And so then now I can assign that to all the pieces here except for the wires. So I'm going to leave the wires as is, but then everything else can get that matte material. So now I'm going to bring in the camera and the lighting just so that we have matching lighting. Okay, so I have some of the lighting in here. I'm going to create a 
couple of extra lights that I can use to simulate like the neon sign here. And that way we're going to get a similar lighting situation. I'll change this color and then we can create another light over here that will represent the sign light for the neon sign here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a test render and see if we're getting everything that we need here. So if I check the alpha here, you can see uh, the wires are getting masked by all the geometry that's in front of them. So, so when I go to composite it, I won't need to do anything then to, to make the cutout correctly. Then the wires can all animate. Then I can just animate the wires here in a scene and render those out very quickly. I'm going to increase this light here just a little bit, just to give them a little bit more of a rim light. Okay, that looks pretty good. We can adjust that later in compositing if we need to. That should be everything that we need to do then. The final thing that I'm gonna do is set up a scene with the fans isolated so that we can render them separately. So again, what we can do is just render 45 frames and then we can loop the frames over and over when we get them into After Effects. I've also created some masks here as well with the similar kind of materials for where the neon tubes are or anything that's crossing over the fans. That way I don't have to paint that when I get into Photoshop or when I get into After Effects. Okay, so let's go ahead and start all these renders and that will wrap up this section on lighting and rendering and we'll get into post-processing in the next video. I'll see you guys over there.